we still have the prejudice that thought is superior, the front of the brain is superior, and that thought uh, is mostly kept in things like this. So that, to some degree, Africa as an idea is not as, quote, advanced, quote, as, let's say, ancient Greece or modern Europe or et cetera. And what I'm saying is that what I've tried to say all this afternoon is that there are what I've called, uh, not me alone, I mean, I've taken it from these, this handbook of indigenous methodology, there are indigenous modes of knowledge that are embodied, and they are knowledge. They're not objects of study. They're not exotic. And we need to understand uh, what worlds they create, how they create them, and we need to practice embodiment. Uh, uh, I try in my classes, I think uh, Regina knows this, to always have an aspect of actual experience, not just sitting and listening. And uh, uh, I do workshops and I do uh, 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 artistic work, but my artistic work is not alone in a studio. It's with other people. So a room like this is marvelous, and I really enjoy it, but it's not my normal modus operandi. My normal, normal modus operandi is smaller spaces, people who can get up on their feet, uh, where you can stretch, you can do a little yoga. You can begin to integrate uh, thinking as part of the body, so experiencing as part of the body, touching as part of the uh, body. So I like it when people come up here and embrace, but it's just the beginning. So uh, when, when I go to uh, uh, these, uh, again, I'll refer back to the capoeira and to the candomblé because I saw them right here. So in the, in the candomblé, uh, the whole room was active. It wasn't like what we are today. And, and yes, there was a mabiata, so I'm the mabiata, but she was, uh, had uh, created enough that she could sit back and the room was behaving. The room was behaving. Or when I went to the Candomblé, uh, excuse me, the Capoeira, so there was training, they were playing, and they pulled me in. Pinguin pulled me in. He didn't ask, do you like to do this? Should you do it? He's the master. He pulled me in, and I had to do it. I don't know Capoeira from, uh, you know, fried lamb chops, but I, uh, I could see what they were doing, <laughs> and I could do it in my bad way, but there's no, in a certain sense, bad way. Bad way leads to good way. How do you, I mean, I'm glad I have a translator, but the way you learn a language is just, you know, the only way you can get around is by, you know, uh, learning a few words, more and more and more. You have to be thrown in. So, uh, and, and this was a kind of knowledge. Now, what he did, what Pinguin did, and I, uh, uh, John can tell you where he is, or some of you may actually participate, of course. You have to go to see it, but what he does is, he then used my presence to speak to the rest of the people about the knowledge he was conveying. You see what I mean? He would, he, he would be there, uh, if you stand up, Regina. So he was, he was kind of holding my hand, and he was saying, and so what we're doing here, obviously it was at too high a volume to just be for me, but this performance was for the other people in the room as well as for me. And he was saying that it needed a, a community and, and that he was addressing the community and he was using me as part of the way to say to the others in the room how important this was. And he, was, he had some sense that I was a quote, a VIP, a visitor, so therefore, uh, an important visitor, therefore if he owned me, he could get through to them uh, e even more. And, and, and at the end also, all the ordinary things that come up, you know, the ceiling is falling in. Is the university gonna continue to support us? In other words, so it's not, uh, mystical, and it's not without its immediate demands. Uh, but what I've been emphasizing, and when it's published, it'll be clear, is that there is an epistemology of indigenous uh, people, of, of indigenous performance practice. And as artists from the, that side, and as anthropologists and performance studies scholars from the other side, we have to uh, investigate with them, not of them what these epistemologies are. That's the other important thing. It's like form an active research team, not to find out what, quote, they do, quote, but to do with them about 
the knowledge. What knowledge are they interested in? What knowledge is Penguin interested in revealing? What does he want to get at through this practice? And what knowledge do you as an anthropologist want to get separate from understanding him? Unless he says, part of my knowledge is to understand you. In other words, I would set this up as a methodological law. You can only investigate the questions that you both want to investigate. And then you may start off very narrow, but that would be a revolution. You can only investigate what you and the culture person group that you're working with also wants to investigate. So you're always working on a common problem. Find out what it is. If they come in and they say, I don't want to learn anything about you, and you say, well, I want to learn something about this, I think you'll find that you'll always find some little bit of mutual ignorance that would be satisfactory for both sides to investigate and find out how their practices, I hope somebody's recording this because this is maybe the most important thing I'm saying all day, how their practices and our practices converge and can enliven each other, you know? Would you find out that in learning a, a basic anthropological theory, if you were to start to recite the theory and do the capoeira moves and near misses as you're talking and making a, a term, a report in the room, will you learn it more? I don't know, but that's the, that's the, that's the, that, that, that's the question. And, and as you investigate the history, let's say, of capoeira, of martial arts that the slave makers didn't know were martial, and that's why they missed each other. It's in slow motion, but you're really kicking the shit out of whoever owns you. Uh, you know, how does that affect kind of, uh, 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 let's say, theories that are queer and are not so acceptable? And how does the kicking uh, in slow motion affect that theory? And how do you explain to him what a queer is affect how he dances. I mean, and the other thing I'd say, and this is probably not going to be acceptable to many of you, don't worry if their practice changes any more than you worry if your practice changes. What people want to preserve, if we are in a mutually respectful uh, uh, relationship, they will preserve. Uh, d d you know, so, and, and what changes, changes. Things, things uh, I, I was saying how ancient practices can come from way back. That's true, but they are not the same as they come forward. Any more than the giant tree is the little twig. It comes from way back, but it's not the same. So we should welcome uh, both the learning of the root, in English means road, but also the root in French, racine, the, the root. I don't know if the same pun would occur in Portuguese, that it's both the root of a tree and the road and the flower. You want to water the roots and you want to enjoy the fruits, the stuff that is hanging on the tree. So these organic images, I think, are va valuable to us.